I recently prototyped these I2S stereo amplifier boards using PCBWay. They work really well and I made a Bluetooth speaker using them. But there's a couple of improvements I want to make. The first is the size of the board. My original plan was to make them the same size as the Adafruit Mono I2S amplifier boards. Now I'm not sure what happened, but somewhere in the excitement of PCB layout I ended up with much smaller boards. This has had the knock-on effect of things being very cramped. You can't see the silk screen for the two speaker connections, which is pretty poor for something that is supposed to be a nice friendly breakout board, and the screw terminals are hanging off the edge of the board, which frankly just looks a bit rubbish. So it's time to fix my mistakes and do a version 2 of the board. Now I'm going to take this opportunity to learn KiCad and see what it's like. Now my first task is to learn how to pronounce it. Is it KiCad or KiCad? Let me know in the comments. For now I'll just stick to KiCad because it's easier for me to say. So why KiCad? Not only is it free, but it's also open source. If there are any problems or things I dislike about it, I can always dive into the code and try and fix it. It's also very popular in the maker community, and it's good to learn new things. I'll let you know what I think of KiCad at the end of the video. So I've already downloaded KiCad and installed it on my machine. I want to get it set up with the right design rules and settings for PCBWay. Looking on the PCBWay GitHub account, there's a link to a template project we can use. We can easily follow the instructions here, it's pretty straightforward. We just create a templates folder and clone the repo into it. With that done, we just go into KiCad preferences and update the paths so the user templates path points to our new templates folder. Now, when we create a new project, we can select the PCBWay template. This should give us all the correct settings and DRC rules for PCBWay. To open up the schematic editor and start our design, we just double click on this icon. I've made one change to the preferences that lets me use my trackpad to pan the design. This makes navigation a lot easier as I can just use two finger swipes to move the canvas around and I can pinch to zoom in and out. To place the symbol, we either use this icon or we use the P keyboard shortcut. The first problem we have is that we don't have a symbol for the max 98357 in the symbol library. So let's get that fixed. I've found the symbol on Octopart, so we just need to download it. I've created a libraries folder on my machine and unzipped the download into it. I'm sure there'll be more symbols required over time. To add it to our symbol library, we go into preferences, manage symbol libraries, and then we click the little folder icon to add our downloaded lib file. Going back to the schematic editor, we can now find our symbol and place it. I'm just going to quickly recreate my original layout from EasyEDA. I could just try and import it, but I want to learn how to use KiCad. I do have a complete video on the schematic for this project, but it is pretty straightforward. We need a 7-pin header for the input. Looking through the symbol library, we can find a component for this by searching for connectors. I'm going to use labels to hook things up to avoid wires going all over the place. You create a label using this menu icon and then just click where you want them. Double clicking lets you quickly modify the name. To rotate symbols, use the R keyboard shortcut. Make sure you have the mouse pointer over the symbol you want to rotate. Similarly, we can duplicate symbols using the C button. Again, just make sure the mouse pointer is over the symbol you want to duplicate. To place the power ports, we use this symbol and then click where we want the power port. We can find and place the ground symbol we need, and we can also find and place the VCC symbol. To place a wire, use the W keyboard shortcut. This does have some slightly weird behaviour where the wire starts wherever the cursor currently is, but you get used to that after a while. Just place the cursor where you want the wire to start. Once again, I'm connecting all the non-connected pins to ground as I did in my previous layout. We just need a couple of decoupling capacitors, so I use the the P key to place two generic capacitor symbols and hook them up to VCC and ground. The final thing we need is a screw terminal for the output. Once again, it's the P key and we just search through the component library for screw terminals. So that's the left channel done. We can just make a copy of this to create our right channel. If you just drag and select, then you will start moving the components. So you need to shift and drag to make a copy. The right channel is the same as the left, but there's now a resistor going to the SD line so the chip knows to only process the right channel. We've got a bunch of question marks on our components, so I'll just quickly fill these out. I'm not sure if this would be done automatically, but I'll just do it now to be sure. I'll also put the values on the symbols for the capacitors and the resistors. 
Before we generate the PCB, we need to assign footprints to our symbols. KiCAD works in a slightly different way from EasyEDA. The symbols are independent from the footprints, so we need to assign a footprint for each component in our schematic. This is done from the tools Assign Footprints menu item. This is pretty straightforward for most of our components. The filter works quite well, and they have footprints for everything. However, we don't have a footprint for the Max 98357 chips. We could use a standard footprint from the existing library, but I'm going to use the specific footprint that we got from Octopart. To import the footprint, we use Preferences Manage Footprint Libraries. We click on the folder icon and navigate to the folder that contains the footprint file. We can now go back to our schematic editor and finish off assigning our footprints. To convert the schematic to a PCB, we need to generate the netlist. We do that using the netlist icon. We can now open up the PCB tool by double clicking on this icon and import the netlist. That's brought in all our components ready to lay out. I want to have a custom board outline that has curved corners and I've done some playing around and some research on KiCad and it seems the consensus is that to do anything more complex than basic rectangles you should use a different tool and generate a DXF file. So I'm going to use Fusion 360 to create a sketch of the board outline and give it rounded corners. I can then export this as a DXF file and import it for the board outline. What's interesting is the construction lines from the sketch have also come through, so maybe it's worth deleting those before doing the export from Fusion 360. To move components around, you hover over them and hit the M key. Rotate is the same as the schematic editor, just use the R key. With our components in the correct positions, we can do the wiring up. To start a track, just push the X key, and then you can insert vias as you are drawing using the V key, and carry on drawing on the opposite layer. To quickly switch between layers, you can use the plus and the minus key. I found this quite helpful when placing tracks on the back and front of the board. With our signal tracks all done, I just need to add some thick tracks for the power and the speaker outputs. There's a handy track width calculator built in that we can use to work out what size we need to use. We can add our new track width to the available options, and then just add our wide tracks for the power and the speaker connections. I'm going to add copper pores connected to the ground net to both the top and bottom of the boards. This will give us some good thermal dissipation for the amplifier chips. The chips are very efficient, but let's give it a bit more help. This works pretty well. The only thing I needed to change was the clearance to match the capabilities of PCB Way. I've also stitched the front and back ground pores together using vias. Now, one of the things that I was really keen to try out on KiCad was the 3D view of the PCB, and in particular the 3D export. Opening up the 3D view works really nicely, but the models for the amplifier ICs are missing. To fix this, we need to open up the footprint properties and associate the 3D model. For some reason, this didn't work properly when we imported the footprint originally, but we just need to fix up the file paths. Back on the PCB, we can now just update the footprints and our 3D model is fixed. The 3D export is one of the main reasons for me to start using KiCad. I 3D print a lot of boxes for my custom PCBs, and having an accurate model is priceless. Exporting the step file and importing it into Fusion 360 seems to work really well. For my workflow, this is a bit of a game changer. Having an accurate model of your PCB along with the components on it makes designing enclosures considerably easier. It should eliminate a lot of guesswork. The final thing to complete our PCB is the mounting holes. I need to move the screw terminals slightly closer together to fit these on, and I hit a problem with the DRC. There's a rule in the DRC about overlapping courtyards. The footprints for the connectors in KiCad have very generous courtyards, which makes it quite hard to put the terminal blocks close together without breaking the rules. So for my design, I've turned these rules off, as they aren't really relevant, and I know the screw terminals will fit without any problems. It took a bit of poking around to find the option for this, but I did find it eventually. Rerunning the DRC, we just need to fix up a track from when I move the screw terminals around. We've now got our mounting holes and I can reload the model in Fusion 360 to have a good look at it. Labelling the pins is a pretty mechanical process. Once again, I'm labelling both top and bottom layers to make it easy to use, and I'm sticking my board label and revision number on the bottom of the board. I'm pretty happy with that. We're good to go. To export the Gerber and Drill files, I followed the instructions from the PCBWay website. Use the File Plot menu option and select the required layers. For a two layer board, we need the top and bottom copper layers, and then the solder paste, silk, and solder mask for both layers. We also need the edge cuts 
to give our board the outline. You'll need to make sure to check the use protel file name extensions as well. And you also need to generate the drill files so the PCB manufacturer knows where to make the holes in your PCB. Just follow the instructions on the PCB website and you should be good to go. We just need to zip up the results of this export to have something we can submit to PCBWay. I've also used this online Gerber viewer to double check the results of the export and it looks pretty good. I'm going to be doing SMT assembly with PCBWay so I need to create a bill of materials file. We just go to file fabrication outputs and click on bomb file. This will create a CSV file that lists our components along with their designators. I've opened this file up in Excel along with the bomb file from my previous version that PCBWay sent me and the template Excel file that PCBWay suggests. Let's try and get our file to match what PCBWay would like. The first thing I'm going to do is remove the mounting holes, the pin header and the terminal blocks as they won't be assembled by PCB way. I'm not sure why the mounting holes are included, uh, I don't think they're really components. I'm going to get PCB way to supply the components, so I just need to let them know the manufacturer and the manufacturer's code. Fortunately I can copy and paste these from the original bomb file and I can look them up on LCSC to see what they should be. We also need the footprint positions for our board. One thing that I did need to do was include footprints even if not marked for surface mount. If I didn't do this, my ICs were not included. Hopefully this would have been caught by PCBWay before it got to manufacture, but I'm happy that I caught this error. With all the files generated, we're now ready to submit the files to PCBWay and get our boards ordered. To do this, we use the quick order process and upload our Gerber files. All the defaults should be fine for us and we can fill out the details for the SMT assembly. On the following screen, we upload the BOM file and the position files. PCBWay will take our BOM file and work out the cost for the parts and we'll be good to go. So after 12 hours or so, I've received the final quote for parts from PCBWay. They filled out the costs. If you're concerned about the costs, you can go onto the LCSE website and double check the prices to make sure they're reasonable. But these ones look pretty sensible. So I've approved the order and we'll see the fruits of our labor in a couple of weeks. I can't wait to see how they come out. Fingers crossed we've not messed anything up. So what do I think of KiCad having done an end-to-end -end project with it? I actually found it surprisingly pleasant to use. Symbol and footprint management is a bit confusing. It took a few tries to understand how to do it. But this seems to be the case with all PCB software I've used. They always seem to make symbol and footprint management amazingly complicated. The UI is a bit 90s looking. It doesn't look that nice and there's other software that does look nicer. But it is functional and the icons are fairly easy to understand. There's a few quirks and weird things but I got used to it pretty quickly, so I give it a solid 8 out of 10. I would recommend giving it a go.